Yeah, deepest condolences to the to the family. But I think as well, it's a small community, the horse racing community, and I think this will shake an awful lot of people because very often, you know, racing is about people who do it for the love of the sport. Um, Lorna was an amateur. She did. She rode because she loved riding. Um, she loved competing. One of the greatest thrills that she had was when she went over to Ireland and rode that winner over there. Um, every ride that she had, every winner that she had, meant an awful lot to her and to her family as well. And you know, it's really, it's a really sad day. And when racing loses one of its own, it's it's pretty tough to swallow. And and like I say, you know, it's it's quite shocking when when you hear the news as a, a jockey you go out to ride and you know you hear all the things people say to you oh you know it's a risky sport and you know you never know tomorrow's ride might be your last and you just like honestly you just think yeah 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 it's the sort of thing that happens to somebody else it doesn't happen to you and then something like this happens and it brings it back to everybody how close these guys are to the limit all the time you know, you are millimetres away sometimes from something like this happening and you can never underestimate the risks that these people who take part in this sport take every single day. So every time you have a losing bet or a losing ride, maybe it's not all that bad after all. Look, it's sad and, and tragic, not only obviously for Lorna, but her, her family uh, in particular, her friends as well. Um, it, it's just horrible. Uh, that's the only word for it, isn't it? And that's what everyone will feel today. Um, riding a racehorse, riding a horse is a very dangerous activity. And the only thing I can compare it to really is, is driving a car. Um, you know, you do it thinking you're not going to be the one who has an accident. Um, that's why we drive cars. That's why uh, jockeys ride horses and, and people sit on horses on a daily basis. They, they take that risk. But of course, from time to time, that risk will have horrible uh, consequences uh, as it does on the roads and as it does with, with horses. And this is one of those really tragic, tragic moments. And obviously, uh, everyone is is feeling for the for the racing family as well. You talk about the family of Lorna Brook, but it's it's a racing family that feels this, and I hope that they feel joined by everyone in this fantastic sport. Um, that we feel their loss as well. There will be a minute silence held at Windsor today at 1 p.m. just before our first race. Um, obviously, uh, there aren't thousands and thousands of people here, but I uh, obviously uh, the jockeys and uh, any owners who are there today will adhere to that very, very uh, much with, with, with sadness and the thought of Lorna in, in their minds. So without any doubt, we're all thinking about Lorna Brooke and her family uh, right now. Um, it's just a real tragedy. Yes, thank you, Alex. Yeah, it's quite a sad day. And you see Brian Hughes has got a, a black armband on. And obviously really sad news this morning, Brian, about Lorna. Yeah, it's terrible, Mick. Like, obviously, look, that's the harsh reality of, of this sport. But, I mean, you always sort of hope and pray it's never going to happen to anyone. Um, and obviously, you just, when people get a fall, you just, it's the first thing you do. You, you hope they're getting up OK and, you know, competitive edge goes out the window and you just you know hope they're okay but it's terribly sad for Lorna and her family and her friends I mean I don't I don't know her very well at, um, but as I say she, she when I rode, rode around Bangor and you know places like that and she often had her, her a few runners there and whatnot but yeah I mean it was it's, it's terribly sad what happened to her in the first instance and I, I must admit I, I didn't know the extent of of the injuries um, but just to read this morning that she's lost her life is it's just it's very very sad but uh, you know i was saying earlier on racing is such a small community that when we lose one of our own it affects everybody of course it does mick yeah i mean like the end of the day like it's 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 just it's it, you know if someone she's lost her life you know doing something she loved um but yeah it is you say it's a small community and, and everyone's feeling it today now more so in her family and her friends and, and the racing community because it's something you never like to see happen well, listen, the very best of luck here this afternoon. Yeah, I just right. wish her family and friends of condolences and um, they hope they, they can um, look back on her life with, you know, with a smile rather than you know, the way it's ended. Listen, thank you, Brian. Thank you. Job done here. David, can I just 
say today you're wearing the black armband. It's quite a tough day for well, listen, everybody. You know, our hearts are broken in the amateur ranks. You know, they were, um, Lorna and her mother were, they were sort of something of what this sport's about, actually. You know, mother and daughter, mother owned a lot of them, trained a lot of them. You know, you'd see them on the course together. Great, you know, it's something of the family spirit that's, that's a bit the heart of this sport. And so, you know, I think probably a bit of our hearts is missing today as, as a result. It's, my heart just goes out to them. It's, it's the most catastrophic circumstance, but racing does this right. We saw the tweets, some of the biggest names in our sport reflecting and reacting to this in such a loving way. We'll have a minute of silence at all the tracks today. There'll be jockeys will be wearing black armbands and today will feel slightly different, but today will be Lorna's day and a chance to, to remember and reflect on her. And it just shows what a, a unifying sport racing that's is. Right. Having never spoken to Lorna before, they then developed a friendship that's lasted over the next six years. That is the, the, one of the most heartwarming elements of that story. It was that picture that we saw. It's the win that she generated, but beyond that, it's the friendship that was made and as I said racing is full of fractions and factions and everyone's got self-interest in this sport but when required racing steps up and we find that today and a friendship was made and that link was still maintained so you know it's it's, it's one of those things where the overarching is it's beyond sad it's beyond deplorable but the positives are what it does to the sport what she represented to the sport and how the sport reacts and reflects on people like and Paul, for anybody who didn't get to see an interview with Lorna, just tell us a little bit about her and, and who she was and her, her personality. Ah, oh, lovely, lovely person. I mean, I, I, she wrote a few winners for us and we have kept in contact over the years. She would through social media and that. And um, she has been congratulating me on winners and vice versa. And an absolute lady, a young lady, a lovely young lady. And... and it's shocking, really shocking that, that this has happened. And she, in her legacy, Paul, leaves behind that, that win in the first ever ladies' race at Turf Fairy House. You, of course, trained Moonloan Lane on that occasion, who, if I'm right in thinking back, had never won a race until Lorna got on board that day. That's right, that's right, that's a fact. Um, we had several different tactics, used several different tactics, and... Um, but she took the bull by the horns and went on that day and, and it, it, it paid off and she gave the horse a fantastic ride and it was true. I had never met Lorna before. I hadn't spoken to the girl and um, it was true Peter Rowe. She was she was more or less allocated the ride on the horse and I was quite happy to give her the ride because she had been in, you know, several winners in the UK and point to point and that and I knew she was a very capable rider so... Uh, but like it walked out and she rode him again then and several times again and she did win on him in Musselboro Waddles after that as well. And how did that associate, if you'd never spoken to before, how did that association come around in the in the first place, Paul? It was just through the race. Um, the lady riders, they were allocating the, the UK riders um, to Irish horses and it was Peter Road that recommended her and I said, yeah, that's fine, we'll go with that. And, and that, that's how it came about. And it, it's, it was, as I said, it was a great association. Like I, I, I have been in contact with her since, and lovely. she's a lovely, lovely person. And she was the only British amateur in the race that day. But just give us an idea how, how pleased she was to have beaten the likes of Nina Carberry and, and Katie Walsh in a, in a race like that. Oh yeah, she she was over the moon. She was over the moon, absolutely. She she um I'm sure she got a great kick and, and her family as well. Like I I met her I I met her her mother in, in Bangor and D one day as well. We had lunch and, and lovely, lovely person, lovely people.